Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd, and tonight's Bible study, we're going to be talking about checking your love level. Yes, we need to check our love level, whether we're doing it religiously or whether we're doing it honestly before God. God's love is so powerful, sometimes people can't handle it because they never ever felt that kind of love. I know I never felt that kind of love. I had to learn about it and accept it. But we're also never supposed to compromise our love for people. You know, making compromises for the sins that they do. We need to tell them the truth no matter what, emphatically from the Word of God. We're going to look at the Good Samaritan. We're going to look at some other things that God says about love in His Word. So get your Bible, get your paper, get your pen, and get ready for a mighty Word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. establishing and building the men and women of God. Let me walk on the word of the word that they may be established in them. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the house say, Amen. 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 All right. After listening to all those rules, I think I, um, I think I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 13 first. My sermon, by the way, is going to be checking your love level. Okay? I may have toured it here a while back, but the Lord told me to bring it back again. So we're going to be talking about checking your love back. Oh, love. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do that first. Because some people like to say, hey, man, all these rooms, you ain't loving me. Oh, we loving you immediately. You just don't know how much love you. God didn't send you here for us to hate you. He sent you here for, for us to love on you. And sometimes love takes a lot of correction. Y'all heard the term tough love. Yeah. Hey, Amen. You can't get out of your addiction out of your sin with somebody toughly love you. Toughly is a word. But anyway, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. Start at verse, first one. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, the word in the King James charity means love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling sinner. Now when he says, though I speak, he's talking about though I may communicate these things and have no love. I sound like a sounding brass in the temple. He's using a lot of what we used to call in Bible college uh, figures of speech. So this is full of a lot of figures of speech. Verse 2. And though I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love or charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profits me nothing. Love or charity suffers long and is kind. Love or charity envy is not. Love vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up. Verse 5. Do not behave itself unseemly. Love don't behave unseemly or unruly. Hmm. Or rude. Amen. Amen. It doesn't seek not its own. It's not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Now that word there, thinketh no evil, that's a Greek word called legisma. It means it calculates nothing. It's a, it's a calculating term. You know, accountants use legisma. So no matter what happens to you, I don't calculate uh, what you've done to me or what I've done to you. I'm just loving you. But the, me loving you and saying, well, I put all these rules on you, I'm calculating. No, you ain't supposed to calculate your love. Amen? Amen. 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 Verse 6. Rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. What does it mean? Love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. What is iniquity? Love don't rejoice in sin. I'm not going to compromise with you concerning your sin. I'm not loving you when I do that. How about, well, Jesus ain't judging me. Well, I got a right to. Yes, he did. He said, you keep this up, I'm sending you to hell. I love you. Hello. Well, how am I going to compromise with you and say, brother, it's okay. It's okay. No, I long suffer with you. But my love for you is going to tell you the truth. You're homosexual, I'm going to tell you, you're still going to hell. I love you. I accept you. But if you live in that lifestyle, you're going to love you. You're a drug I love you. But you're still going to hell. You, you're an alcoholic. I love you. But you're still going to hell. You don't stop. Amen. People love me through my addiction, but 
they still told me, you're going to hell if you don't change, Warren. Okay. I love you. Come as you are. Let me clean you up. But if you stay that way, you're going to hell. I don't care if you call on Jesus' name a hundred million times a day. He forgives you, but guess what? He's going to still send you to hell. Mm. Amen. Sound like Pastor was out of <laughs> But love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. It doesn't rejoice in your sin. If I'm not telling you the truth, I'm not loving you. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes people can't handle the truth. Handle it. That's the greatest love you'll ever get is un unadulterated truth. And sometimes you don't like it. I know I didn't. You better be lied to. Even the scripture says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Amen. Open rebuke, open correction about yourself is better than secret love. Amen. Amen. We got the world now compromising their love about, you know, same-sex marriages. I don't care what that world says. I don't care what the president says. I care what God says. Yes. Marriage is a spiritual thing. God ordained it for an earthly purpose. And when he ordained it in heaven, he said man and woman. Amen. Do I got anything against gays? No, I don't. But they do can't get married. And expect me to accept it. Okay. I love you. There's the truth. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get married. Come to church all day. You go to hell. Mm -hmm. They love you. Amen. That's too hard for some of you. Huh? I had a big argument with that one of my brothers in Christ. And I told him, Are you saved? I got rights. They need their rights. We ain't got no rights in Christ. Your righteousness says you stink like a filthy rag. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know what a filthy rag is in the Bible? A woman's coat tax. Hello. So every time you're self-righteous, you smell like a woman's stinking coat tax. That's why I preach it. What's a coat tax? A Mr. Rag. The things she feeds on every month. Oh, uh, let that brother, brother just got saved today. Amen. I'm proud that he received the Lord today. Amen. You have some many questions as you need. Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 7. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. See, we endure, but we ain't got to compromise. Amen. Verse 8. Charity never fails, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. All this stuff will be done away when Jesus show up. Amen. Now watch this one, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a what? Man. Man. Now I'll give you some more work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 5. I think that was a good start after the year. You know, I'm happy at this because God is a correcting God, and when He corrects you, He loves you. He's not correcting you into whipping your tail. I don't understand how we can come in here and give orders about things when you're here eating, sleeping, washing, and ain't paid the dime. Okay. But you want to give people orders on what to do. Like you deserve something. Like you got rights. You ain't seen the love of God that puts you in here to feed you. You haven't seen the love of God that clothes you. You haven't seen the love of God that this man of God buys your medicine. He don't have to do none of that. And you have a nerve to believe you have a right to ask for it? Come on, people. Where's your love? Well, let's look at some scriptures. Matthew 5. When I was here, pastor didn't buy my, buy my uh, prescription. They didn't take me nowhere in the back. I had to walk everywhere, sign that book. I don't know when it changed. 
But I'm glad we're getting back to the foundation. Amen? Because I love this place. I miss this place there when I was traveling. But I'm glad to be home. Amen? Amen. Look at 5, starting at verse 43. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. You know what I like to do? Let me stop there for a minute. You know what I like to tell people? How many of you here have ever hated someone? If you have ever hated someone, I mean deeply hated someone, then guess what? If you hate them, you have must once loved them. You can't hate nobody unless you first love them. Hello? Why, brother, I hate you. But then you must have loved me once. Why do you hate me now? Because I don't agree with you. I don't compromise with you. The greatest thing you can do to somebody is have no feeling at all. They call it narcissistic. No empathy, no nothing. Most serial killers and cult leaders have that, have that problem. It's called narcissism. They don't feel nothing. They cut your throat, kill you, rape you, do whatever. They feel nothing like that. See, that's the thing I don't want. But to hate somebody, there's an emotion. But guess what that hate will also do? Kill you. More people die in the word of God because of unforgiveness and hate in their heart than heart attacks, drug overdoses, and all that. So if you don't start loving and get rid of that hate and unforgiveness out of your heart, you're going to drop dead. I don't want to die that way. I don't want to die with a hateful heart. Do you? No. Hey, Lord. Even with my enemies, I'm still letting them know I love you. Because I realize in order to hate you, I must once loved you. So every time you tell somebody, I hate your guts, all you're doing is tell them, I must once much loved you so deeply. Because in order to hate them, they did something that hurts you in order for you to feel that. Amen. Look at how everybody's looking at me. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. It's true. Amen. 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 Let's keep reading. Verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Mm. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward you have? Do not even the publicans, for that word publican means sinners, do not even the sinners do the same thing? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And if you salute your brother only, what do you more than others? Do not even the sinners do so? But you, therefore, perfect, even if you, therefore, be you, therefore, perfect, even if your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. That don't mean you want to be perfect like Jesus, but that also means give them up. Think upon these things. Don't calculate it. Be as perfect as you can com commonly be by loving someone who's hurting you. So that that thing will seep into you, and you drop dead and die over hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, and strife in your heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. The problem with the church today is that we have not stopped and checked our love level. Are you truly walking in the love of Christ? You're religiously loving, but not honestly loving. If you were honestly loving the way Christ loved, you would have more compassion, more mercy. There would be long-suffering for your brother and sister. There would be no condemnation or judgment on your part concerning their faults. Just restoration of that brother and sister back to the will of God. See, religiously loving is, is this. I ain't going to judge you. I don't have a right to judge you. I hear that so much. As a Christian, you have every right to judge. Do you know that? Amen. We ride on that scripture. Most people, that's the only scripture they're going to ride because they don't want to be judged. Matthew 7, 1. Judge not, be not judged. Well, that means the intent of your heart and your intellect. I can't judge that. But I can judge your actions. I can judge what's coming out your mouth. Amen. 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 I can judge what I see you doing. And as a Christian, that's righteous judgment. Amen. And I have a right to judge. If you're lying, I can call you a lie. If you're kissing another man, I can call you homosexual. <laughs> if you're smoking dope, I can call you a drug addict. I see you doing it. Don't judge me. <laughs> what do you mean? You're doing it. <laughs> I see you. I see you bombing for apples. I see you. Go to Matthew 18. 
I gotta make sure y'all still woke. Drives the whole 
set me out of order. Don't Amen. Amen. That's why God said it's great for us to be in what? Some phony together. That's why two in agreement can chase a thousand or tens of thousands. Especially when you're having issues. Amen? Amen. But don't ever, ever take no one that just agrees with you. Amen. Your love level ain't right. Yes. Matter of fact, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was in Philly and homeless, in the church as a deep, still doing my junk. Didn't want to hear what nobody had to say. Because I'm going to live by orange rules, even though it's about it. See, I got to keep it real. But I began to live with this guy, and he had a home. He pretended he didn't get high, but I knew he did it. You know, I just wanted the roof over my head. I ain't care. But he had no running water, right? So I had to go to the church, which was down the street. And I used to take the men to the men's fellowship there. They would feed everybody breakfast on a Saturday. You know, you get there. But I would go every day, and I had to go to the bathroom. Because in the toilet in the house I was standing in, it was full of duty. Nobody could use it. I couldn't even wash my butt. Hello. Mocks. So I said, you know, instead of me going to the park to pee in the park or to go to the booty club next door, you know, because I was deep and warm. People knew me. I didn't want them to see me coming out of that place. Now here's my stinking thinking. But long as I was in the room smoking, I ain't care. But I still didn't want nobody to see me going to the place. See how hypocrite I was. Amen. You know, God broke me. I don't care what y'all say. He broke me. But I go to this church and I said, I'm going to use me a barrel. You know, I know, I know the pastor. I'm going to go up in there. I go in there, make it a week. All of a sudden, this deacon dude met me at the door one moment. You can't come in here. I'm like, brother, I've been coming in here all week. Can I use the bathroom? It's right there. No, it's kids in here. You can't come in here. He kicked me out of church. How many of y'all been there? I know this church is down here. They see you coming, won't even let you in because you don't fit their mold. Well, yet they say they love Jesus. But they ain't letting you in because you don't smell right or look right. So you know what I did? It was coming up that week, I went to a home and I still had computers to have a computer guy, but I always had a computer with me. So I said, I'm gonna write the letter of pastor on that fool. I wrote up this long, detailed thing. So I go to the men's fellowship. As soon as I'm there, I see him in there. And I'm sitting in there, I saw the pastor. I, you know, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and take this letter to the pastor. But I eat the breakfast first. I'm gonna eat first, Amen. then I'm gonna rat him out. Amen. I'm gonna rat this dude out because you know they would do the thing and ask some questions. But I'm gonna tell on this guy. I'm gonna just do everything. He wouldn't let me come take a pee uh, in the church. <laughs> Call himself a deacon and a brother. So I see the pastor come out the bathroom and took the letter and I said, Pastor, how you doing? And put the letter back in my pocket and walked out because the Spirit of God told me to not rag on this spirit. You know why? Because he's my brother. Am I going to cover my brother? I'm getting ready to show you something in a minute. Then the next week I come to the church. Now, all of a sudden, I am going to go to the bathroom because I'm looking for him now. I forgot sneaking there being at the door. I'm looking for him. There he is. You know what he did? He met me at the door and said, come on in, brother. I'm so sorry I treated you that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And let me use the bathroom. He started giving me buckets to take back to my house. The fellow was saying. Now, what if I had ran him out to the past? <laughs> Who would that have fell on? You. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. So, go to Proverbs chapter 10. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 10. But more than I want to tell you, but that same scripture that I just gave you, if your brother trespasses against you, come on, check your love. Amen. 